Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video, Kerbal Space Program video. Before we get started, I posted a picture on the community tab of an area that was right next to our job site and I asked everybody, how many snakes can you see in this picture? The answer is four. For those of you, heh, for those of you that got it right, I tried to give those individuals a digital cookie. Now the fourth one is kind of hard to see, only because of the fact that just before I took the picture, I guess it spooked and started slithering away. You can still see a little bit of its tail right there and somewhat of its body in the top left corner. But anyway, the VTOL Moon SSTO, yes! At first I was going to try to make this a rocket SSTO until I started crunching the numbers and finding out that with this amount of weight of 50 Kerbals to not only bring these Kerbals to the MUN but also bring them back, we required, what? We required? Required an enormous amount of fuel. I'm sure that if I actually sat down and gave it a good couple of days, I could fine tune it so that the SSRT could at least get to the moon and land. Maybe not take off, but definitely land. However, I just went ahead and designed an air breathing SSTO instead, with rapiers, of course. Although the thought did cross my mind to try to make an SSTO or air breathing SSTO without rapiers, a couple of whiplashes and stuff. Maybe in the future, because that kind of stuff I like. It's kind of fun. However, there was one thing I didn't want to use, and that was the almighty bow down before your master nuclear engine. The absolute go-to when you're talking about interplanetary travel, other than the ion engine. I ion engine is great for small vehicles, but when you're talking about something that's large and very, very heavy, ion engines are, well, unless you want to sit there for a million years making one maneuver, it's not exactly the best course of action. But no, I didn't want to use the super sippy nuclear engine. I wanted to try to make an SSTO that was not only able to carry a large payload, in this case, 50 Kerbals to the MUN, but I wanted it to land in a VTOL style and then take off and go back to Kerbin without refueling, without needing the nuclear engine. So in order to save as much Delta V as possible getting through the thick atmosphere, I had to do that little fairing trick. You know, the one that we found out many videos ago where you could place a fairing inside of a fuselage and get the same no drag characteristics from that fuselage without being bogged down by a huge heavy fairing. Some other tricks that I used of course when it comes to uh, air breathing SSTOs such as tilting the wings in a dihedral pattern as well as having them tilt up just a little bit which I was thinking about making another how to build SSTO videos and then going in depth about that kind of stuff. Definitely would be a fun thing to do. You know me I try to make it try to make it real easy real real easy to understand. I wouldn't bog everything down with math or whatever I just say hey this is how you do it like this see like that. Okay, okay, good talk. talk. Now, you know how I feel about SSTOs making interplanetary travel several years with those poor little Kerbals stuck in their seats. I like to go for a more realistic approach. Nobody wants to sit on an airliner for years, so that's definitely not going to happen. If you do interplanetary travel, you could use an SSTO, sure, but realistically, something the size of a, let's say, 747 with maybe three or four, five max crew because you would need a bunch of space for food, supplies, entertainment, sleeping quarters, something to keep them sane and alive for that trip there and back. However, in this instance, getting to the MUN only takes about seven hours. Now, in Kerbal time, six hours is like a whole day, day and night cycle. So you got three hours day and you got three hours night. So you got three hours day and three hours night, but still seven hours nevertheless. So I'm okay with that. For a bunch of Kerbals to be strapped in their seats for seven hours might sound horrible, but I've been on a 12 hour flight one time when I went from California to Germany nonstop. That was rough. So I know seven hours to go to the moon and back is pretty nice, even in a Kerbal time frame. Now going to Minmus, you're looking at about a month in Kerbal time, which is way past, almost shoot, way past 24 hours. That'd be several days human time strapped in a chair in an airliner like setting. No, thank you. To hell with that. So if I'm not going to do it, then I don't expect the little Kerbals to be able to either. No, if we're going to take a SSTO to Minmus, it'll be a big one, but have like half the crew because you have to give them rooms now, place to dine, entertainment, transforming the SSTO from a bus into more like a yacht. But anyway, I love it how I just start talking into left field and just bleh. Now, like I said, when I made the moon or the mun SSTO, I wanted it to be more than just your average tiny little SSTO. I wanted it to be large. I wanted it to have like 
50 Kerbals or more. I wanted it to be able to go to the Mun and come back in one go. And I wanted it to do something different than normal SSTOs that I've seen go to the moon. And that is, besides not having to use the nuclear engine, I wanted it to be able to VTOL land. I figured that that would be pretty damn cool. Like the whole Avatar shuttle concept. Many, many, many different designs went through the ringer. I even had a design where I was actually going to put the cockpit on the side of the craft. I'm actually glad I didn't do that. It started off small and it started gradually growing as I learned that more and more Delta V was needed. But finally, after I want to say two weeks of testing, well, I say two weeks, but it was like an hour every day I was able to work on it. Finally, I managed to get the damn thing working. It had enough Delta V and it did everything it was supposed to do. I just had to learn how to fly it. It was a couple times where it didn't quite maneuver the way I thought it would. And so I had to change my tactic when it came to landing and stuff. In order to save the most amount of fuel I could, I landed on the two o'clock side of the Mun. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video about how to leave the moon or the Mun the most efficiently. Landed on two o'clock side and I just made one straight direct burn to Kerbin. Before I did any of that, however, I made sure that Kerbin was in the right position so that when I went back to Kerbin, I would slam into the atmosphere and be able to park it at the Kerbin Space Center without having to worry about getting into an orbit and all that crap because all of that wastes fuel. Because of the weight of this thing, when I took off from the runway, you have to be going at almost 1,000 meters per second or 900 plus meters per second, close to 1,000. I, I wouldn't go to 1,000, but close to 1,000 before you allow it to start gradually gaining altitude by itself. This is the only way you're going to reach almost 1,600 meters per second in the atmosphere, saving you a lot of Delta V by the time you switch over to rockets for your rapiers. After you get into orbit around Kerbin, you should have just a little under 3,000 meters per second Delta V. That'll allow you to burn about 856 meters per second, give or take, to go to the moon or the mun. And once you're at the mun, you're looking at about 13 to 1400 meters per second, which is just enough to land on the mun. And after you land on the mun, you should have just a pinch a little bit over a thousand meters per second Delta V, which is plenty of Delta V to be able to take off and head back to Kerbin. Now, since I wanted a VTOL craft, that means I'd be burning a little bit more fuel than normal, especially taking off or even landing, which is why I made sure that I had extra Delta V in the tank. Why VTOL? Why not just land on my butt and then flip over onto my landing gears like normal KSP players do it? I'll tell you. For one, it looks Fucking awesome. awesome. And two, if you're a passenger on board this space liner, I don't think you'd appreciate it too much to be swung back and forth real quick just before landing. Even though I just realized that that's how SpaceX is going to do it, but that's fine. Me personally, I think it'd be pretty cool if the whole craft could land VTOL onto a, a type of pad or something and then take off like a VTOL headed back to Kerbin. Just makes it look all that more awesome. But anyway, here it is. The MUN SSTO, VTOL SSTO. Having quite gotten a name for it yet so if you have a name for it make sure to put it in the comment section below i'll definitely take a look at everyone's comments if i find a name that looks pretty cool and has an awesome meaning or no meaning at all just sounds great then we'll use that so let me stop blabbering and i'm gonna roll that awesome ssto footage for you because i know that's why you're really here bring it in three two one
Well, everyone, there she is, the VTOL Moon SSTO. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like to help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program, mostly SSTO stuff. I also have a membership program with cool little emojis and badges and stuff that you can put next to your name and whatnot. Definitely check it out. But that's all the time I have for today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.